Hello and welcome to Diploma Visual Arts. I'm Jessica Murphy and the other teacher for the course is Mr. Wynne Williams. We both work really closely together as both of the lessons are scheduled at the same time. So although they might be in one of our two classes, they'll be getting support from both of us. We're also supported by Kun Navin, who is himself a practicing artist and gives a fantastic opportunity for the students to see the real world application of their artistic practice and how the assessment criteria align with being a practicing artist. Our studio philosophy has been um, made between the three of us. I believe in bringing out the best in every student and helping them to reach their fullest potential as an artist. I'm committed in helping every student to excel and to guide them to grow as an artist and as an individual. We really believe in getting to know our students as more than just a student and understanding that we're taking them from being students into being artists and we've turned our classroom into an artist studio for that reason. This might be the only interaction that you have had with the IB before, maybe come into the exhibition. The exhibition is worth 40% of their grade and it's where the students present four to seven pieces at standard level or eight to 11 pieces at higher level. And the idea is that these pieces work together and show the technical accomplishment. So this might be the only way that you've interacted with the IB before. Sorry about that. The other 40% is coming from the process portfolio, which is very similar to a sketchbook, an idea development that they've shown in MYP or in other courses before. For standard level, that's thirty. Um, 9 to 18 slides and for high level that's 13 to 25 slides and that's pulling together their best pages and evidence of their experimentation, exploration, the manipulation and refinement of a variety of art making activities. This will be made over the two years and then um, selected at the end. The comparative study might be the element that's new to you and that's the last 20%. Students will pick three artists that interest them, potentially around a similar theme from two different cultural contexts though. And they'll have the chance to explore how the cultural context informs the piece of work that is produced. It's a critical and contextual examination of the work and understanding how artists respond to their environment or political, social um, influences. This is something that we have encourage students to understand through MYP, but this is the only part that might be a different assessment criteria than what they used to. This is 20% of their course. The way that we do the course is that we have three un we have six units per year. MYP has always been three units, so it's worth keeping in mind that they will be asked to do more, but there are six lessons a cycle rather than four. We'll start with them exploring their own mark making, doing artwork, we'll visit exhibitions, we'll look at 3D, 2D and lens based. They'll start to pull together what interests them and then the comparative study will be the link between year 12 and year 13. So just as a review, year 12 is this process of recording creative thinking and exploring that individual artistic ideas. The comparative study is the bridge where they start to hone in on what interests them specifically as an artist. Then year 13 is focused on pieces for the exhibition and refining their process portfolio and creative process. Year 13 is full of check-ins and one-to-ones and mini guided self-study and self-advocacy, although there are no specific units. With that in mind, our course expectation is that they're prepared and focused and ready to learn something new every class that they're engaged, proactive, and participating in the class, not afraid to share their thoughts. They're responsible for submitting all assignments and attending all classes to the best of their ability. If there is gonna be a problem where they won't be able to attend class, letting us know in advance. If there is gonna be a clash with another deadline and it's gonna be difficult for them to meet the assignments, letting us know in advance. And remaining respectful both towards the teachers and their classmates. We like to think of ourselves as a team and stay united and support each other in that way. In terms of our 
um, ATLs, our attitudes to learning. We want to build self-confidence, self-management so that they can self-advocate. We need them to understand growth mindset, be a critical thinker about themselves and artists' work and understand that they're pushing past a superficial exploration and be a global citizen. So look beyond their own sphere and think about how they fit into the world and maybe what's happening in the world informs their artwork. The idea is that they are an active artist inside and outside of class. So regardless of whether or not they're having directed homework, it should be that they are continually producing work and making new artworks. A normal lesson will be active. It will either be drawing and painting like you can see here, which is from our first week of school, or it could be art history and art research. It could be a critique or one-to-one -one support. It could also be independent and self-directed study, but all of it is active. The less laptop time, the better and more producing work. We would invite you to see exhibitions with your students and discuss artwork that interests them and interests you. If you have any um, interest in their gradebook and their learning, please feel free to look through their sketchbooks with them, look through what they've done. Um, comments and criteria are on Veracross, as with journals and peer feedback. Some of that might also be on Google Classroom, so please sit down with your students and ask them where you might find information and what sort of assessments they're doing at the moment. We are happy for students to continue working in studios if that's what they've been doing before or maintaining tutoring, but that has to be very clear to us that that's, what's ha that that's extra support that they're getting. When we submit the work to the IB, it needs to be that we can acknowledge all of their work as their own. If there's a disparity between the work that is produced in the lessons and the work that's produced when they're outside of school, we won't be able to sign off um, as academically honest because we won't be able to guarantee that it is their work. So please make sure that it's clear what it is that they're doing and what it is that they are getting help with outside of school. That being said, all work needs to be their own. We want you to understand that for especially the first year, grades are not as important as the numbers and that's not as important as feedback. So the number doesn't really equate to a grade for us for the first year. It's a number out of 10, not a grade. And the feedback that we assign is the most important thing. Keeping in that growth mindset, students just need to work with the feedback they've been given and continually improve. If you have any questions or concerns about the grades that they've got, please feel free to email us. And if you have any questions or concerns or interest in what they'll be doing over the course of the year, please feel free to check out our website. There are all of the units on there, although they might change a little bit as we go through. And there's more support on all of the different aspects. We're really excited for the year ahead. And we know that we've got fantastic students and they're going to make us all really proud. Hopefully we'll see you soon in person. And until then, have a great time.